Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this consultation video series. We're gonna walk you through all kinds of homeowners across North America who've taken advantage of our free consultation. Where We're gonna walk you through all kinds of different tips and tools and tricks to go and effectively light your home with landscape lighting. So to get your own free video consultation, just send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and I'm gonna get back to you with your own customized video presentation. Or go check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or watch more of our great videos on how to install landscape lighting on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so here's the example now of, like I mentioned, we already have our wire brewery, so we've got a wire that's coming from one direction We've got our fixture in between, and then we've got our wire that's going to go out to our next fixture. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that wire, and we're just going to cut into it now. And same as always, we're going to strip approximately an inch off each end. So that's our wire that's going to go out to our next fixture. And then we have our wire coming into this fixture that we're going to do the same. Strip the ends off that. And then as you're looking at your, your BVS2 connectors, you'll notice that there's three holes and that's why we're gonna use it for this fixture in between. So you've got your smaller 18 gauge wire coming from your fixture that's gonna go into the smaller port. You push that all the way in and then you've got your wire that's coming in from your last light and you're gonna push that all the way in and then you've also got your wire now that's going out to your next light and you're gonna push that all the way in and then you're gonna snap that down tight and then you should still have three wires left you've got your 18 gauge wire from your fixture You've got your line coming in and you've got your line going out. And again, there is no positive or negative, so it doesn't matter if it's the exact same wire throughout, as long as you've got all three of those wires going into your connection. Snap those tight wires aren't coming out and now you go and bury those wires and you've got your connections done. Um, both are, are waterproof uh, connectors that have a good uh, mechanical seal. Mechanical seal just means they snap tight on those wires so they're least likely to pull apart. Um, and you'll find both of them are do-it-yourself kits. You have your, your BVS2 snap lock connectors which I'll use at the fixtures and I'll show you in a minute. And then we have our DBRY connections. So why we throw these in and I get asked all the time is if you need to tee off a wire somewhere. So for example, in this project, we ran all our, um, all our low voltage wire with our irrigation lines and we've left a bunch of extra wire at a few of the heads. And I have a light up there that I'm gonna have to now get a wire to. So I'm gonna tee off of this with another 12-2 wire to get it over there. And the reason we use these as opposed to these, is just the uh, the ports and the connections uh, on these connections is not quite big enough to fit all of these wires. So basically what we do is we have our excess wire here that we're just gonna cut into now. And we have our wire that's gonna go to our fixture. And now we're gonna go and tee those off. So we're gonna strip off roughly an inch of every end of those wires. And another thing to keep in mind with low voltage wire, because I get asked all the time too, is is there like a, is it like stereo wire where there's like a common and a negative and you gotta keep the same, the same wires connected throughout? And the answer is no. It doesn't matter if you connect, uh, if you connect this, this same wire throughout all your lights, as long as at every fixture, you've got one of each of these wires now connected, that's all you need. So there is no you know, positive or negative or common or, uh, or otherwise. It's just as long as you've got all your connections made, that's all it requires. So again, we're just stripping off roughly an inch of each of our wires to make our DBRY connections. And then with these, 
the way they work is there's two parts. There's a simple marette. Uh, it's not gel filled or anything, but that's gonna fit into our gel filled tube. And we're gonna take one wire from each of our strands. And we're just gonna twist those together. And then we're gonna do the exact same with the other three remaining wires that we have. We're gonna twist those together. Throw our marette on them. And then once we've done that, that's where we use our waterproof gel filled tubes. And these simply slide in, you get them right to the end and then they just snap tight on the wire and those wires are not gonna come out of there. So you're gonna make two of those, you're gonna have your wire that came in, your wire that goes out, and then now you've teed off to your extra wire. Next, I'll show you how to use the BVS2 connectors at every light. Um, you know, one of the questions I get asked all the time too is that uh, there's, there's two ways to wire these. There's one is when you have your wire coming to your light and then it keeps going out, how do you wire that? And if your light is at the end of the line, how do you use these to wire that? So for example, this is a light fixture that's at the end of the line, meaning there's no more lights after this one. So we just have one wire, um, one 12 2 wire coming to this fixture, and then we have a wire from our fixtures. So the way we do that now, is we still have two connections at every single fixture. But now we're going to use our BVS2 snap lock connector. We're going to take our 12-2 wire and that's going to fit into one of the ports. And each of these connections has three ports. That's for if we have another light uh, ongoing, which I'll show you in a second. And then our fixture wire goes into one of the other ports. And then those simply snap tight and hold those wires in place. And then we do the same thing with our other set of wires, fixture wire, our 12-2 wire, open these up, our wires go in, snap tight, and that's our connection here, so we're going to wrap those wires up and then bury those at the fixture. So on this project, we're remounting a lot of lights up in the trees and kind of down lighting, getting those lights up nice and high, 20, 25 feet up there, shining through the branches, so we can kind of create some shadowing down on the ground here. So um, the thing with that is the, the wire for the fixtures we have is only, um, it's only about 10 feet long, so I don't want to have a big waterproof connector hanging halfway down the trees. Uh, one thing you can do if that's something you have is just go buy a junction box at uh, you know the Home Depot store or Lowe's or whatever it is um, and just put that connection in one of those just so you don't have to look at it, at least it hides it. Another option that we often use is these, um, these shrink wrap connectors. Again, you can get them at any home improvement store. Um, what I like about them is they are gel filled here. So once they get, sorry, <laughs> be on me here. Um, but they are gel filled, so once they heat up, the gel actually seals around the connection, um, and they're very inconspicuous, so that's why I like using them. So um, we're gonna use them for this. So I've got my, my wire to my fixture, so I wanna make that a lot longer, and then I can make my connections down in the ground and stuff. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, I've got my wires, I'm just gonna slide my tube on, because you need to get your tube on the wires first. Uh, so we got that on and one thing I do is I cut, if you can see here, I cut one of them a little bit shorter than the other and I'll show you why I do that. It's, it's basically so I can cheat and just use one of these as opposed to having to use two, um, which same as any of the connections, usually you have to make two for each fixture because you have two wires, but we're gonna cheat a little bit and I'll show you how. Um, so basically what I've done is with my wire that's going out into the ground and my fixture wire, I have one longer and one shorter. So I'm gonna take the longer one and I'm gonna connect it with the shorter one and I'm actually just gonna twist tie those up. Just twist them together uh, nice and good. And then I'm gonna just bend one of them so it kind of looks like this, right? 
I don't know if you can see that. So I've got it uh, like this and I've just got it bent and then I'm gonna twist the other two together. Um, and I'll show you in a second why I do that. And then we're gonna twist that is so that I can go now and I can bend these like this and the connections aren't gonna be touching each other. See how they're separated? So they're not gonna be touching each other inside the same um, inside the same shrink wrap connector. They're both in there, they're not touching. Something else you can do just to make sure is sometimes I'll, um, I'll put some electrical tape just around those just to make sure those connections don't touch. Um, and then I'll go and I will shrink wrap that together. So how you do that is very simple. Is you just need a, a torch of some kind and then you just uh, lightly warm that up. And you'll watch it shrink. You're gonna be careful not to get too close and burn anything. Make sure all the wires are still inside. Um, it's pretty hot afterwards, so give it a good little, um, I just try and seal it up a bit, but you can see the ooze is kinda coming out a little bit, so it's all waterproofed in there. And once it solidifies, it's pretty hard, and you are not pulling those wires apart. So uh, if you're doing any tree lighting or need to, uh, hide some wire and extend it and make a pretty inconspicuous connection uh, shrink wrap connectors is a really good way to go hey guys just one more quick tip here um, so we've ran all our wire to all our lights but uh, something I always talk about is leaving lots of extra wire even though I think this is where we're gonna have this light tonight when I come back at night we might want to move it two three feet that way or four feet this way or whatever I've got 10 feet of extra wire around this and that's that's standard what comes on this fixture so you don't need that much but even two three extra feet of wire so that you have a little bit of play and then also if later down the road because this is our last light on the line say we wanted to add some more lights down the road there well I have a whole bunch of extra wire that I can tap into and I can keep my run going assuming I have the right transformer and all that kind of stuff which I'll talk about in a bit but extra wire extra wire extra wire it doesn't cost that much in relation to how much of a headache it's going to be if you don't leave it. So leave extra wire at every fixture and even some spots along the way is going to save you a whole bunch of headaches if you ever have any ambitions of expanding. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video presentation with some great tips and tools on how to go and properly and effectively light up your landscape. And be sure if you want your own free consultation video just like that one, Send me an email at cal at lightingdoctor.ca with a few pictures of your property and we'll get back to you with some really cool ideas and ways to go and effectively light your property. And be sure to watch the videos after this one for more tips on how to install landscape lighting as well as how to light up your landscape the best way possible.